right, making some progress getting this thing tore down, but check this out. Look at that. I mean, it was really dusty out there, but all of these connections, this is tight. These are totally tight, and that one's tight, and that one was really tight, and look at that buildup in there. This is an AM, I think they're part of the Brute Force series, but these are, the dry flow are supposed to filter out more contaminants, more fine particulate. But with that turbo sucking in, as much dusty air as it is out there in Georgia, I guess, I guess some got through. I mean, it's all really fine, so nothing, nothing large is getting in there. It's all just like ultra fine powder, but still. Really would rather not blow this thing up. So if you guys have any good ideas there, let me know. I've actually got it pretty loose. The only thing, because I use that hot lock on these guys, they're in there with the force of like 16 neutron stars locked into place. So I didn't want to have to pull this off if I could help it. Along with rebuilding the rear suspension, one of the things I'm just going to finally do right are the engine mounts. This one, the new one up here, I think is helping a lot. It's this one here is more of a nuisance than it is than anything else. It prevents me from using a larger cup uh, for this CV here because of the minimal clearance. It's right in the way, so anything that I need to fix or reach under there for this big tower is blocking me. If I have a great engine mount on this side, I've got a great one on this side. I need one great mount over on this side. Essentially, that's what will hold the engine. It'll, the engine will hang from those two, and then I'll do kind of what the factory does, where I'll just, instead of using, what would you call it, like a torsion bar to prevent rotation, I'm just gonna fabricate a whole mount, a whole mounting bracket for this that will lock the transmission into place, likely using this bar. I'm just gonna take my grinder to it, chop that sucker right off. End of day two, and I finally got the manifold off. I just had to shove crowbars and screwdrivers and things and wiggle the engine around and pry at it. So you can see this was the this was the one where we lost the one bolt. I think originally we lost both these bolts on that side. You can see the exhaust was Blowing through the side there, we definitely cooked the gasket. Hopefully I didn't warp the surface on either this or the header. The whole wastegate was coming loose here. I gotta put another bolt in there. The exhaust looks good, no exhaust leaks from the manifold. So we get to finally take a look in this transmission here. But let's look at our evidence bins before we even get to that. This being the primary one, so this is everything that came out of the transmission. <laughs> There's definitely some metal in there. Look in the bottom. I mean, not as much as I thought there would be, but there's definitely metal. I was kind of expecting some big chunks. Definitely cooked that exhaust gasket. That would be the second one I've cooked. to that side of the buggy. You can tell these, the manifold that I built for this was done correct. And what I mean by that is whenever you have gases flowing from one part of the engine to another part, in this case, from the head of the engine into the exhaust manifold, I want the exhaust manifold portion to be larger than I do these ports. If these parts were larger than the manifold, then that airflow would come in and it would crash into a wall. For example, if the airflow were going backwards, you can see this carbon buildup here would be a result of the spent gases crashing into this wall. We can see that this one is done correct because there is a buildup of carbon all the way around and also that carbon does not go beyond where the gasket is seated. So this has been done nearly perfect. That's a beautiful thing.
All right, making progress. Got the transmission separated. Now, in theory, I should be able to turn the input shaft, and we should hear something unusual coming out of the transmission. I don't know what, but we should hear something. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, de there's definitely something in there that's not normal. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, there is some carnage in here. Oh, it just locked up. What the what? Oh, that one's 12. That's just a magnet meant to catch, you know, shavings. Uh, but we're definitely down a few teeth because those are definitely some teeth. So the question is, did we blow up just a gear? Let's keep digging. The diff appears to be fine. Usually these whole things can be slid out as an intact assembly. There it goes. Only some chunks down in the bottom. Those look like teeth. Ooh, look at that. Oh, we cleaned house, boys. We cleaned house. Yeah, that's your problem right there. Ain't got no teeth in it. The next day. So this is the input shaft, power comes in here. This is first gear because this is the lowest gear ratio here. So that's first gear. Then if we were to shift into second, that puts the uh, synchronizer onto this gear here. So that's gonna be second gear, which by the way is completely blown. Well, maybe not completely, but pretty heavily blown. Uh, this would be third gear. In my opinion, third gear appears to be the weakest gear in this transmission because if that's second, that's considerably wider than this gear here. That would be third, fourth, and then fifth. I mean, these are all really, really small gears. Even the differential. Like, look at how small this differential is. It's like everything on this car is just miniature. So I knew that we were gonna blow this transmission up going into this project, but we had to see what it would hold. And uh, of course, now I wasn't running 30 pounds of boost at Durham Town. I was probably running 20 pounds of boost, maybe 22 pounds of boost. If I was running, say, 22 pounds of boost, that would have put me at about 240 horsepower, which is where about I think I was running while we were on the trip. And I didn't want to turn it up because I knew that this would happen almost immediately. And uh, that's why I never ran the 30 pounds through it. I wanted to see if it would hold 20 pounds first and it did not hold 20 pounds. But now that I'm looking at this, second gear is actually beefier and stronger than our third gear. So had I not blown up second gear, I definitely would have blown up third at some point. And then I just don't ever use fourth or fifth in this transmission. So that brings me to the solution. So what are we doing to fix this buggy? Sorry to keep you guys waiting, but I just wanted to get the parts in so I had something to actually show you on camera. But let me show you the new tranny. So this is the new transmission. This is, oh, it's upside down. Sorry, I was working on this a little bit last night, but this 
is a Celica GTS transmission. It is a Toyota C20 transmission. Now for you performance guys out there, if you're into the MR2s, the Celicas, the Toyotas, that sort of thing, you're probably already familiar with this transmission. Between the C60s and the C64s, they're very desirable transmissions. The biggest reason why these are such popular transmissions for the aftermarket, and there's also parts and stronger gears available and LSDs available for this thing, all kinds of good stuff that I didn't have the capabilities on on the old transmission. The reason why is because these transmissions from factory come with the closest gear ratio of any factory transmission on the market. So over here, I've got the gear ratios for the Mirage 5 MTs. Now these are the 2014s and up. These being the C60 Celica GTS transmission gear ratios. First gear on my old setup, 14.37. That means for every 14.374 revolutions of the crankshaft, we're getting one revolution on the axle shaft or the final drive. The new transmission is almost identical at 14.338, which is perfect because first gear in the buggy was always pretty perfect. It's this huge jump from 14.3 revolutions to 7.7 .7 revolutions that would make the engine bog down because the biggest spacing in this previous transmission is the first to second gear shift. So 7.7 .7 is where we were jumping to before. The Celica C60 uh, final drive is gonna be 9.284. So that means I should be able to get boost going right into second with these ratios. Now, third gear, which has always been primarily my final, what I would consider my final drive for this previous transmission. At the top of third gear, I'm well over 100 miles an hour. Third gear for this previous transmission is 5.3 revolutions to one. My new third gear, is going to be 6.7. So then third on the new transmission is only a little bit taller than what second gear was on the old transmission. And then that 5.31 is probably about as tall as I need to go because that puts me at over 110 miles an hour on the top end. So I really don't need to go a whole lot lower than 5.31, but maybe it would be nice to have an overdrive. So now my new third gear ratio is gonna split the difference between the old second and third gear ratios. Now, just like first gear, fourth gear is also just slightly taller than what my old third gear ratio is. That'll probably give me, oh, maybe one or two, maybe three mile an hour more on the top end. So that gearing essentially is really all I need because that 5.280, that's gonna put me at, if I had to just guess, depending on how high the red line is, it's gonna put me at about 120 miles an hour. So essentially the same as what my previous third gear was. So we'd actually be able to use fourth gear finally. Now, fourth was just never a usable gear ratio unless you're, you're cruising at 70 miles an hour, there really wasn't a whole lot of power to be had at that ratio. So let's say I wanted to make the buggy street legal and have a cruising gear for highway speeds at 70 or 80 miles an hour. Then I would use that old fourth gear ratio that was in the buggy previously. Now the really cool thing about this is we can actually, I can keep fifth gear in this thing. And again, fifth gear is actually shorter than what my previous fourth gear is. It's not until we get to sixth gear that the two ratios actually finally meet up once we get all the way out to six. So that's why I'm so excited because these are so much more closer spaced together than these ratios over here. And the neat thing is that these C60 transmissions, because enough people have been using them, we know that there's a little bit of information about what kind of power they can hold. These transmissions have been no, known to hold 300 horsepower fairly reliably. Doesn't mean that there's not gonna be parts that are gonna be worn out that you're gonna have to do with things like synchros and so forth, but reliably, 300 horsepower is not an unreasonable figure for this type of transmission. There has been some breakage above 400 wheel horsepower with these transmissions. I would rather keep the buggy at 330 horsepower at the wheels, have a reliable transmission. I would prefer that than I would 
go up to a stronger transmission and then run 400 horsepower because it's already the most insane thing you'll ever drive. There's absolutely no reason to go more power on this project. It is absolutely insane. It would smoke my Z900 and that was a fast bike.